Listen up, y'all. You have seen me in some pretty questionable situations. We've been through a lot of life together, you and I, over the last 11 years. This is definitely topping one of the most unwell I have ever been, ever, in my life and on my YouTube channel. But we're gonna get ready together regardless. Hello from Ibiza. Let's get ready together and literally draw some life onto my face because look at me. Look at the state of me. You know what, actually, I just, shout out to these. I couldn't actually show you the state that I was in before I just poured buckets of these Lumify eye drops into my brain because my eyes were so red, I was so unwell. I have had uh, zero sleep over the last four days since I've been here, but we are pulling through. You know, I'm always surprising myself. I keep pushing the limits with how far I can function on little to no sleep. <laughs> And today's just one of those days. So um, we're just, we gotta pull it together. We've got a dinner, okay? We are here to celebrate our girl, Susie. And I've been in Ibiza for the last few days for Susie Benaldi's, Madame Susie Benaldi's bachelorette or Hindu. <laughs> She's been calling it a bachelorette, to be fair. I know that a lot of the Brits go with the Hindu, the Hindu name, and I don't actually know the origin of why that is. Why is it a Hindu? I don't know, but I love hearing them say it and I think it's hilarious. So yes, we are staying at the TRS Ibiza and and this is actually our last night and really sad, but I wanted to get ready with you on the last night because we haven't had a good old chat. And to be honest, we've just had so much fun girly time. We've just been catching up, having a blast. And tonight's definitely gonna be a lot more chill. A lot of the girls have gone home, which was really sad. And there's only a handful of us stragglers left behind. So we're just gonna have a little bit more of a chill, a chill vibe tonight. But I still gotta show up for the gals and for the pics. You know, so fun fact, this is the first time I've actually done my hair so far this trip. <laughs> I really held on to my r and blowout for as long as I possibly could. And then I did wash my hair yesterday, which sometimes I actually really like my hair when it's air dried. It just has that kind of like texture and beachy feel that I can't seem to replicate myself when I'm trying to like do my hair. But today it's necessary to give it a curl. And that's one thing I'd like to know. I just bought a converter, a little converter plug off of Amazon. And my T3 iron has never led me astray in other countries. This little iron has been around the world with me and I can't travel with my Dysons. You can't use a converter with your Dyson. They say that it will void the warranty. So don't do it. I don't want to tempt fate. But definitely had some hair tools that have just like not worked before. They kind of just go and explode a little bit. If you try to use them with a conversion plug, never have I had an issue with the T3 one. It has worked with every converter, every other plug I've ever put it with. It's been in multiple different lands with multiple different converters and she's never led me astray. And this is the original one that I have had. I've gone through phases of different sizes that I like with this because this is the one that comes in a trio and you can switch up the sizes but I'm into this one right now. I'm gonna let those sit for a little bit actually I want my curl to hold a little bit more. My hair has just been not giving, not serving. <laughs> it's just because I can't do it. Anyway, so back to my own sleeping because I actually find this very interesting. If you've been following along with my like hot girl winter, hot girl summer, anytime we've had any remote discussions about health, basically since I started my training program, working with a trainer coach to just like revamp my whole lifestyle and health and wellness and all that good stuff. For the most part, I've pretty much all but given up alcohol. Like alcohol has kind of been removed from my life in the sense of casual drinking. Like I'll definitely have a drink now and again for special occasions or birthdays, whatever. Like when Dan and I got married, we each had one glass of champagne the entire night. They sat at our spot at the table and I don't even know if we actually finished our glass of champagne, but it's definitely been something that I've been interested in less and less and less. And that's for a multitude of reasons, but more so because I feel deeply about the fact that I think it's so funny that so many of us will try so many different things to like be healthier and feel better from the inside out. But alcohol is just always like a non-negotiable for so many people. And it was for me as well. I'd be like, oh, I don't know why I'm so sick, but here I am drinking like four to five nights a week and not excessively, but even when I did drink excessively, it was just like, Oh, whatever. <laughs> I'm just like depressed and hungover for two days, but it's fine because we had such a good time. And I will say there is a time and a place for drinking, always. I do have such a blast. I feel like it just gives you that level of like comfort and freedom and fun that you wouldn't get if you weren't doing it. And a bachelorette is certainly a time and a place where I'm definitely partaking. But every time this happens to me, I'm reminded of 
how bad it feels. And this is kind of paired with a mixture of things. Like I'm jet lagged, so it's making it so much worse. It's making my like recovery so much worse. Ugh. And I would also like to note that we were not excessively drinking. We have been very tame gals. Just a handful of cocktails, a shot or two over the entire time. And I'm still just like, it's crazy to watch the data on my aura ring on the little app and be like, you are so unwell, please pay attention. And your heart rate is so elevated and you are not sleeping and help. And the anxiety. <laughs> it's just an interesting thing to see. I just think that me, me and alcohol are just not great friends. Though, might I say that once I have had a cocktail, the chattiness just oozes out of me and we can just have a, a good old little dance in time. But I really don't need more than one cocktail ever because when I do, this is the state of me. Listen to my voice. My voice, this is from screaming and squealing in glee because we've just been having such a fab little girls trip. But anyway, that's my little rant that I wanted to impart on you and let you know that I slept for three hours last night and I'm just, I'm not my full self right now. Part of us is gone today. <laughs> but it's every day May and we're on a fabulous trip and we press forward. Uh, so this has been one of the most fun little bachelorettes ever. I have been reunited with some of my favorite UK pals and it's just been, it's been so fun. I love Susie, Victoria. Um, I thought it was so funny because in my mind I was like, oh, I'm also gonna be reunited with Amelia. But we came to the conclusion today that I don't think we've actually physically ever met and maybe if we did, it would have been at like one event in passing years and years and years ago. But that was such a funny thing because when you have like mutual friends and you've also been following each other for so long, like you really do just feel like you know each other. You guys message me and comment all the time being like, I feel like we're best friends. And I'm like, yeah, the feeling is mutual because that happens all the time. When I follow people that I have watched forever, I've watched Amelia since the dawn of time. She's part of the OG crew. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, do I not know you? Or are we not best friends? Let's kind of how it felt. <laughs> and don't mind me because I know everything about your life. But that's just how it happens when you follow people online. You really do. You get a glimpse into their life. Some of us share more than others when we're daily vlogging. But you really do just get the whole package. You get the gist of who the person is, how they are, what they like to do. You like you pretty much know it all. And it is so interesting to see that play out in real life. And anyway, the group of gals is just fab. We also got to meet some of Susie's like outside of the internet best friends and they are such a hoot. Like it's just been such a good group of gals. Susie really keeps some fabulously wonderful shining people around her and that's because she is a shining bright star herself and I just feel like really happy that I get to be here and even be a part of it and witness it and I just love Susie so much and these are just, it's kind of like people that even if you don't see them all the time, we have like a shared experience of what we do. It's like coworkers, but it's different because you feel closer than if you were just coworkers, like going to work every day. It's like, a, it's a different shared feeling. And I just, as Victoria said, uh, we just feel like kindred spirits. And I just, ugh, I just, yeah. I always have such a hoot when I'm with them. I've even taking so many cute pics and taking TikToks and Amelia is the queen of TikTok and she has been having us on it. And it was just, oh, it's so good. You always leave feeling like your cup is full. And when you're around people who just make you feel so good and feel so positive and you just have a good time, you just, you, you don't get drained, you know? Like, I don't know how I'm awake. <laughs> if I was just at home and I had slept for three hours, like I would not be amongst the living today. But when you're around good eggs and people who just, you, you just feed into each other's energies, it's just such a good time. And I love, I keep saying the UK. We're in Spain. I'm not in the UK, but I'm with the UK crew. Yeah, it's just been so fun. And we leave tomorrow and I'm so sad. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But I've been trying my best to vlog some bits here and there. So hopefully you guys will be getting a vlog as well. But if not, we're just, we're just getting ready together. <laughs> The hair is curled. I'm gonna hairspray the living baloney out of it because I think we're eating outside. And if that's happening, then my hair is for sure gonna just fall away. It's gonna blow away and it will be as if I never curled it in the first place, which is already starting to fall. Look at this. See you later. <coughs> we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> okay, I need to get some glow on this face stat. I packed a new product. I bought this because Karen, I Love City, has been raving about it. This is the MAC Strobe Dewy Skin Tint. This is the shade Light 3. I got it in a little bit of a deeper shade to match my fake tan. I haven't tried it yet, so this is going to be risque, but we'll see how it applies. I, I need some glow. This would have been a time that would have been perfectly fitting for me to have packed a glowing primer, but I didn't. I didn't pack when I totally forgot. I also forgot to pack something else. My deeper cream bronzer and or contour. I only packed my Vive cream bronzer, which is like my light normal skin tone shade. And I forgot to pack a deeper one. And that was a mistake because I like to be extra bronzed and warm when I have a fake tan on and also when I'm in the sun. So whoops, 
whoops 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 uh dewy skin tint yeah it's blending out nicely so far i was asking all the gals about the tan because you guys know how i feel about the tan i feel like i just haven't given myself enough like practice time i guess with tans every time i'm doing it i'm doing it like the night before an event i'm doing it for something and i'm always scared to try something new but i think i really need to start shopping around the fake tan life even though this is contrary to what i just said and it's because i was chatting with all the gals i'm, I'm a pale gal i understand that love to fake tan i can tan in the sunshine but i'm really trying to not however when i arrived the gals tans were looking lush they were deep victoria for example is a pale gal like me and I was like, Vic, your tan is so deep. What are you doing? It looks so good. And all of them, Rosie, Ellie, Lucy's Portuguese. She's got a tan going on. Everyone was just tanned. So, so tanned. And I was like, what are you doing with your tan that I am not doing? What are some tips that we can try? What are some things that we can impart on the people to help a girl out? So first of all, the resounding opinion was that no one likes the express tan, which is the one that I always use. And I was like, oh no way. Oh no, I had no idea. So no express tan. Use a regular mousse, Victoria's personal favorite. And the one that she used to achieve her tan on this trip was the Saint Tropez mousse, like the Ashley Graham mousse, which I've used before and look, I just got a little bit lazy, so I was using the Express, but she was like, no, it's not the same, you gotta use the other one. So I'm definitely gonna give that one a go. Susie has a bunch of different favorites. She was very, very strong in her disagreement of me applying lotion before putting on the tan, and I was like, I just, I don't want to say, I'm so dry, like when I get out of the shower, I immediately get that like white film on my skin. And that's the other thing that I like about the St. Tropez ones is they're like, apply lotion to dry areas. There are tans that say, do not put anything on before you put the tan on. It will not develop. It will not adhere to the skin properly. It creates that slippy barrier of product, obviously. So I don't really know what to do about that, but maybe I'll just have to try it for science, especially going into the summer when it is warmer weather and I'm not as dry as I am in the winter. <laughs> we're definitely living in the sweat more. So we're gonna try this Susie Bonaldi way and see how that goes. And I'm also so curious to go back to that St. Tropez mousse to see how it is because Victoria's tan was impeccable, impeccable. Susie also stated that she does not put the tan on before bed. She doesn't like to sleep in the tan, finds it less effective and just hangs around naked as much as possible while it dries. And I can also agree with the effectiveness of that because that's also why I like to do the express tan because I can do it during the day and not have to like sit for too long. But sometimes when I go to sleep, I'll let it dry first. I always put on a pair of like full coverage dark pajamas so I can try to stain my sheets as little as possible but sometimes when I do that and I'm sleeping and my duvet cover is like laying on top if I move my feet I always end up with like a white line on the top of my foot where the blanket's like rubbing across as I'm obviously moving my feet in bed and it's also the smell for me like I'm I'm for sure allergic to whatever is in fake tan there's no question because I have a horrific scent horrific scent every time I use a fake tan and it's not normal it doesn't I don't smell it on other people but because it's so bad when I wear it overnight it actually disrupts my sleep because I'm so distracted by the scent of it one could say oh all of these problems maybe just don't use a fake tan I always every time I talk about fake tan there's always a comment or two or three or however many being like hey we hate the fake tan and razor bail scan blah, blah. there is nothing that brings me more joy than when I have been in the sun in the summertime, I have a little tint, I have a little glow, your skin is glowing and shining and basking in the health of the warm summer sun. There's no better feeling for me. But apparently we can't just freely enjoy the joy of the sunshine and the warmth and the lovely little glow that the brings our sun without being told that we're killing our body. So, you know, I'm trying to ride both lines. You're trying to get that feeling from something packaged in a bottle. It's never the same, but hopefully my skin, my body, my health will be better for it. We'll see. And sometimes it makes you just feel really delicious and fabulous when you want to have a little pick-me-up. So if you are a tan hater watching, just accept that we are tan loving people here. That's another thing I love about girlhood and just getting together and having sweet little beauty chats about all our favorite things. Every gathering is like a girly focus group. You know, you just learn so much. <laughs> I just completely wiped off my concealer there. Pardon me. We'll just let that sit for a sec. Sorry everybody, my darling husband hath risen and I had to say hi I had to say good morning because the time change is fascinating. Trying to coordinate your chats and your calls, it's like, oh, hello, I'm going for dinner, good morning. Anyway, so I did my brows while we were chatting. So brows are on. Before I set this all in, I need to show you the blush combo that I did last night because I really liked it. I did post it on the gram, but I just wanna show you. I did a little bit of the Nude Sticks Nude Screen in the shade Sunkissed, okay? This is the base. And then we're going in on the top with the Armani Bold Pink Luminous Silk Blush. And the shade Sunkissed was originally made by Mary Phillips. 
celeb makeup artist extraordinaire with nude sticks and i love that they brought the shade out in the spf tint which has been fabulous to have and it will be fabulous going into the summer but i hadn't actually tried the shade sun kiss before i had just gone straight to the pinks which is such a mistake but when i was reunited with taylor and the nude sticks fam during our master class and the nude sticks events in toronto she was wearing this rocking it and it just looked so good. I was like, wow, I simply must put this on my body. Anyway, the shade is beautiful and it does look very naturally sun-kissed. And are you seeing this? It also has such a beautiful glow. I'm bringing it right up under my eye. Oh, I just think it's such a pretty color. Honestly, this by itself, you don't even need to layer anything on top of this, but I was just doing it for funsies. And because I was wearing a purple dress last night, so I was like, oh, I'll put a little bit of the pink just to like make it brighter. <gasps> That just reminded me we could do like the little sunset blush. I've been seeing it all over the internet. The little layered sunset blush. Actually, you know what? It's kind of funny. I'm wearing yellow. In theory, Picante would be the one to do. Maybe? Maybe we'll layer up Picante on this because I actually think that'll be really nice and go better with my yellow fit that I am wearing this evening. Anyway, I just wanted to show you Sunkissed in action because I packed it on this trip. I used it for the first time and I love the color it is going to be a favorite for summer for sure okay let's try putting a little bit of picante on top <laughs> the cheeks be cheeking i guess this is technically the sophia ritchie blush combination that she did for the wedding but it just wasn't the spf tint and i feel like the spf tint is much more glowy okay well, i'm gonna put some of that on my lips too this is a little base and then on top of that, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Nude Sticks Dolce Nude Lip Butter because this has kind of a similar shade tone, actually, as Sunkiss, which technically you could put Sunkiss on your lips if you wanted to. I find this is just like a lot more glowy and like lip balmy, but it's kind of that similar tone and I feel like that mixture will be really pretty. Love these warm vibes, love, love. Eyeballs, I don't really wanna do anything ever, so I have my little Armani eye tint in the shade 22. And this is necessary because it is crease proof and I didn't wear it the last two days and I regretted it because my eyeballs were creasing all over. Just a little wash of this, a little bit of sparkle on top of that. You can use the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray to spray the all in, set it in. I'm also gonna pack my little mini Mac Fix Plus with me because that's a was. <laughs> Might need to rehydrate later. Set in the brows. Gotta set the under eyes. I'm gonna use my beauty blender though in the hopes of it being a little bit more hydrated under there. <laughs> hydrated as she stabs a sponge of powder onto her face. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Freck Lip Liner in the shade three. Sorry, I just realized I forgot to line my lips. <laughs> that is a necessary step. I did not mean to so aggressively overline that. <laughs> it slipped. And finally, mascara. I've got the Dior Overcurl. You know, I didn't I didn't pack my texture spray. That's what I forgot with the hair. Oh well. Oh my friends, we are faking awake much better now. We've got the glow on, the hair is done. The eyes are dropped. <laughs> and I'm gonna go meet the gals for our final little dinner date here in Ibiza. So I'm gonna go put my outfit on real quick and then go meet the gals. So thank you so much for getting ready with me today, you guys. Be sure to check back here for the Ibiza vlog to see all the, the other fun that we get up to. And I'll see you all tomorrow for a new Everyday Made video. Thanks for watching. Bye.